first of all, Pat, great branding. I mean, who doesn't want to be a working genius? I mean, don't you agree? Who, who doesn't want to bring their genius to work? So good work on that. Exactly. And everybody has genius. The problem is some people don't get to use it. That's right. Well, uh, we're going to be talking about your new book. It just came out a couple days ago, and it's, all, it's called Working Genius. And so uh, I'm a little slow, though. So someone else had to point out to me that the six different profiles that you write about in your book are descriptive words that spell out the word widget. And this makes me think there may be a flaw in your assessment since it indicates my genius is discernment. So anyone with discernment probably should have picked that up on their own, but I, I digress. Uh, so will you uh, quickly kind of give us an overview of the six profiles? Yes. So it's the, the book is The Six Types of Working Genius, and, and, and they are the six ways to get – all work requires all six of these geniuses at some point. So here they are. I'll go very fast. The first one is the genius of wonder, people that like to ponder things, ask questions, notice things around them. They're looking for potential, and they're asking questions. That's a, that's a genius. It really is. And it's the beginning of every project or, or program or any endeavor. The next one is the genius of invention. <clears throat> that's a person who naturally gets joy and energy from coming up with new ideas and solutions. And um, just, and I have this, you have this, we wake up in the morning like, oh, please let me invent something new. That's uh, sometimes right. it's not necessary, sometimes it is, but we do it naturally. It's a God-given gift, it's a talent. And so invention is next, solving the problem with some you know, original thinking. The next one is called discernment. That's not discerning your vocation like people do in the, in the religious or world, but it's, it's gut feel. It's uh, mm -hmm. instinct. It's like pattern recognition and, you know, just having really good intuition, not data driven or linear thinking, but more like, hey, I think I've, I've seen this before and I've, I'm an integrative thinker. And so those kind of people have great judgment, which is just based on gut. And it's a real gift. Uh, the next one is galvanizing. Galvanizing is the, the gift of rallying the troops. Some people love to get people moving, inspire them and remind them and keep them going. And like, Hey, let's, let's get excited again. Um, there are people that wake up in the morning and like, if I could only do that in my job, I'd be so happy. Um, the next one is the genius of enablement, which sounds bad in the, in the world of addiction, you know, enabling somebody, mm -hmm. but it's good to enable people to, to get things going. They, they respond to the galvanizer. They're like, please let me help. I love to help people realize their dreams. And I'll do whatever you need. There are people, and that is a gift. It's not just about being nice. And just because you're a follower of Jesus doesn't mean this is your genius because it's not mine. And I feel guilty about it, but it's just I'm not good at that. I still have to do it sometimes, but it's not a natural thing for me. Finally, the last, the last genius is called the genius of tenacity, which is not just helping but finishing things. There are people in the world, again, I cannot relate to them, who wake up in the morning and say, just let me finish things, let me cross things off a list, let me dog things and overcome obstacles. They're tenacious and they like to finish things. I, early in a process, lose interest in the finishing part and want to move on to the next thing. So sometimes I have to find people to, that are good at this or I have to force myself to do it or have somebody else force me to do it. So that, that's what they are. Wonder, invention, discernment, galvanizing, enablement, and tenacity. Yeah, that tenacity thing. I am so thankful for Jacinta on our team because she brings the tenacity to our team. So, Pat, your book and the assessment help us identify our working genius, our working yep. competency, and our working frustration. What's the difference between those three categories? Oh, it's a great question. As it turns out, everyone has two of these six things, only two that are their working genius. This is where they get joy and energy, and as a result, they're naturally good. It's a God-given gift. Now, I like to say that's like taking a, you know, one of those um, thermoses. If you pour coffee, if you pour coffee into one of those and put the lid on it, it will hold its energy, its heat for a long time. I mean, you can open it up three hours later and it'll burn you, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's your working genius. It'll hold it. You, you can hold your energy. You can work for 12 hours in your area of genius and still be fired up and really excited. You're getting joy and energy from that. That's a working genius. Now, in the middle is your working competency. You're, you're pretty good at it. It doesn't really feed you. You can do it for a while, but eventually you lose your steam. That's like pouring coffee into a cup at Starbucks and putting a, a lid on it. And it'll hold its energy for a while, but it'll eventually go cold. Well, your working frustration is the last two. 
those are the things that drain you of your energy. That's the coffee you pour into a cup and there's a little hole in the bottom and it just drains right out right away. It doesn't hold it at all. And each of us has two of these areas of genius that are our frustration that we can't do them hardly at all without losing our steam. And they drain us of energy and joy and we're usually not very good at them. Mm -hmm. And and if we don't know which what our geniuses, competencies, and frustrations are, it's really tough to properly steward the gifts God gives us in the work we do. And so those are the three different categories, and uh, we all need to understand what they are. Yeah, so I want to circle back to those uh, working competencies and, and the working genius and working frustration. But uh, before we do that, I can, you know, I can see how understanding my wiring is helpful to know where I can best leverage my strengths and abilities. But the working genius, it's not just for individuals. It's also for teams. Am I right? Yeah, we didn't, when we first came up with this, it was by accident. I just wanted to figure out why I was grumpy at work a lot even though I loved the people I worked with and I loved my firm. And it was because I was doing things outside of my genius too often. And then though we looked at it and we, we categorized everybody else and we were like, oh my gosh, we have gaps and we have people that are good at things and we're not ask, actually asking them to do them. And mm-hmm. we were relying on things like job titles. Like, well, that's your title. We're like, hey, forget about job titles. You're great at that. And that's what this is all about. It's really a productivity tool. And that's just as relevant for churches as anywhere else. In fact, I would say it's more relevant because what churches do is more important than other organizations and productivity matters. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Pat, now that I have you cornered as a guest on today's podcast, I'm going to selfishly uh, let you coach me a bit. Invention and discernment are my working genius. So how should that shape where I invest my time and how I lead my team? Okay. So you and I share the same two so we have the same pairing and we have names for every pair and and you're what's called a discriminating ideator what that Mm -hmm. means is not only do you come up with new ideas that's your the invention part but you're really good at evaluating like in real time like is that a good one or is that so so of the ideas you come up with a pretty high percentage of them you've already thought through now there's other people my wife is one of them she's a wonder invention so she's what's called a a creative dreamer well, she just throws stuff out there, and there, her head's way up there in the clouds, and it's beautiful, but she then needs somebody to come along and discern whether or not that idea is workable, and maybe half of them are good, half of them aren't, and she's fine with that. You and I are particularly, it matters to us to not just come up with an idea, but we discern it in real time, and so our hit rate on those ideas is pretty good, but when I look at your results, um, the one thing you don't like is to G, galvanize. Right. And so like you're really good at coming up with an idea, but you're like, please don't make me sell this again and again and again. Please don't make me come in and remind people or or try to provoke them to keep moving. Because that's just that is one of the things that drive you making people do things that they're not naturally inclined to do is one of your krypton. It's your kryptonite. Well, so right? you, you mentioned it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. But you mentioned it, you know, when it comes to working frustrations galvanizing and enablement are the top of my list. And it seems like that genius that you need that to lead a team and bring the best out of others. So here I am as a leader, I have these working frustrations of galvanizing and enablement. So I guess the question is, uh, coach, should I actually be leading the team or am I in the wrong job? Uh, the, The answer to that is this. No matter what your type is, you can lead an organization as long as you do two things. You know what your weaknesses are, and you surround people who can fill the gaps in. Self-awareness is more important than what your type is. So here's the thing. For you, and I'm speaking to myself here to a large extent, Tony, is like your favorite meeting is like a brainstorming meeting or a strategy-setting meeting. And so during those meetings, you're at your best, and your organization needs you. And that's great. You're at your best. Then, then you're, you're, you're implementing ideas and you should go to those meetings and you should be less inclined to jump in and take over because what we tend to do is make every meeting about the things we're good at. And mm-hmm. when you go to a meeting and you say, oh, this is a GT meeting, a get things done, rally people to finish something. You're going to go to that meeting and you're going to say, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to sit on my hands a little bit. And if you guys need me to do something, let me know. 
but I will not entertain my the fun I like to do because for years I would turn every meeting into a strategy session. <laughs> <laughs> and there are times where it's like, we don't need your ideas right now. We need your help in finishing. Now, here's the deal, Tony. It's okay that sometimes you have to do enabling work, but don't make yourself do it a lot because you're not great at it. And it robs you from spending your time on the things you're best at. Mm -hmm. So this is not permission to abdicate things that you don't like. It's permission to do them as little as you can in service of your organization. Does that make sense? It, it certainly does. And it really then speaks again to the strength of the team as a whole. We need everybody to bring their working genius for the team to have the greatest impact. Um, so, uh, Pat, tell me if this rings true from your experience. Uh, leaders many times, though, think they, they were just born to lead. And because of that, when they go to when they go to hire other people, they tend to look for those people that are wired just like themselves. And it seems like that could actually be a recipe for disaster in the long run. Yeah, it is a recipe for disaster. And, and in churches, this is so important because there can be no silos in a church. You know, people can't say, well, the, the worship or the music side of, of the, the church is not sinking, but the uh, outreach is. It's like, no, no, no. If we're sinking, we're sinking. We're all in one boat. And if somebody has a, a, a natural God-given talent, that would be well used in another part of the church, by all means, let them do that. That's, uh, God intends us to tap into all of our talents. Yeah, that's so. good. Well, Pat, uh, we do, we have a lot of pastors and church leaders who listen. Any specific encouragement you want to give them as they're leading their teams and their congregations or parishes? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, use this for staffing and hiring. And this is what I mean. Let's say you're trying to hire a new youth minister, a person to run youth ministry at your church. So you go out and you say, well, let's find people who are good at youth ministry or have a background in it. The first thing I'd say is, wait, 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 wait. What kind of youth minister do you want? Do you want one that's going to conceive of new programs? They're going to be like inventing and designing programs? Or do you have a good curriculum and you want somebody who's really good at implementing it and recruiting volunteers and and making sure it gets done that has a profound impact on who you should hire and if you hire somebody who's an all-star youth minister and they come in thinking they're going to design the program or they're going to implement that's it so a youth minister is not a youth minister is not a youth minister ask yourself which letters do you need everyone who works in a church should be a minister right absolutely, absolutely. but we minister in different ways that's and right. what a beautiful thing to say, you're a minister, but you might be a minister of hospitality. You might be a minister of thinking new ideas. You might be a minister of getting things done, you know? That's right. And, That's but, right. but when people are not in there using their geniuses, it's, it's, it's kind of tragic. It is. All right. Well, Pat, I have, first of all, enjoyed the conversation. But secondly, thank you for giving me a chance to read the book. I've taken the assessment. It's been helpful for us. And because of that, I had my whole team take the assessment. And thankfully, wow. all, all the letters of widget, now that I know it spells widget, all the letters are accounted for on our team. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're winning as a team right now. But any final thoughts you'd like to share before we wrap up today's conversation? I think churches should use work genius to say to people, let us help you discover who God made you to be so that you're, because this applies whether you're, you're working at home with your family, whether you're working at work, whether you're working at church, anything you're doing that's getting things done, people need to know what that is. And I think it's another great on-ramp for people to say, come in, let us, let us meet you where you are so that you can become the person God made you to be.